Okay, good. So we've looked at lots of different particles now. We know uh, lots about uh, protons and neutrons, and we know electrons. We've even mentioned the positron, right? But we went through all those particles with quarks. But we're going to run into a bit of problem here because we know so many particles that really we need some rules, we need some groups to put these together to classify them to make the whole thing make some sort of sense. Otherwise we just get into a situation where there's just far too much for us to learn. Once we've got some patterns, okay, it makes us much easier and much more useful for us to actually use these ideas. So this is all about how we put these things together into groups and what rules um, we can actually use in the next video to analyze what will happen to things in those groups. So all these matter particles are made uh, are put into two groups. They're either called hadrons or leptons. Hadrons are particles that feel, that just means they're affected by the strong nuclear force and they're all made from quarks uh, and also they may decay by this new force we haven't mentioned yet called the weak nuclear force. So inside hadrons, so protons and neutrons are the two hadrons that we know at the moment, then there's this other force, the weak nuclear force. This is a very, very short range force, even shorter than the strong nuclear force by about a factor of a thousand. So it's not going to act in between um, hadrons. Okay, it's only going to act inside a hadron. So we'll talk a bit about the weak nuclear force later. But the key things to remember about hadrons is they're affected by the strong nuclear force and they're made from quarks. Protons and neutrons are the two examples that we know at the moment but also all those mesons that we talked about in the quarks video. Okay, the second category is leptons. These are particles which do not feel a strong nuclear force, and they're not made of anything. These are what are called fundamental particles. So if you've got a proton, you can say to me, what's a proton made of? Um, it's made of three quarks, an up quark, an up quark, and a down quark. But a lepton, if you say to me, what's an electron made of? I'll just pull a, pull a funny face because it's not really made of anything. It's fundamental. You can't split an electron into its constituent parts. It just is an electron. Uh, okay, so the hadrons are split into two groups. One group is called baryons. These are hadrons which are made from three quarks. Uh, each quark's got a baryon number of plus a third. So by the time I've put three of them together, I'll get a baryon number of one. All the baryon number of one tells you is that it's a baryon. If you've got antiquarks, the baryon number would be minus a third. So you'd end up with a baryon number of minus one. It would be an antibaryon. A little fact that you're supposed to know here is that the proton is the only stable baryon. So of all the baryons that you could make, of all those different combinations of three quarks you could have, every one of them will decay until eventually it becomes a proton. Um, so the second type of hadron is called a meson, and a meson is made from a quark and an antiquark. Again, we've already done a couple of examples if you've watched the video about um, pions and kaons. So we've got a quark and an antiquark pair. Obviously the quark, we've already said, has got a baryon number of a third, but the antiquark must have the opposite properties, so its baryon number is minus a third. So by the time I put these two things together, I end up with a baryon number of zero, which tells you it's not a baryon, it's a meson. Okay, but remember both those particles are hadrons. Okay, the second uh, sort of particle is leptons. These come in different what they call flavors. So just a little bit of history. We, they knew that beta particle was an electron, but when beta particles were produced, they expected them originally to all have the same energies. The conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy or mass energy tells you that the particles should all have the same energy, but in fact that's not true. There's a sort of spectrum of energy of beta particles. This confused people for a little bit until Enrico Fermi proposed that there was this thing called a neutrino which took the rest of the energy. Okay, The name comes from the fact that it's neutral and it's little. So it's a little neutral one, a neutrino. Okay, Don't confuse it with a neutron because it's not a baryon. Okay, It's a lepton. It's a fundamental particle. There's a second kind of... Um, big lepton, if you like, apart from the electron, called a muon. And a muon is exactly the same as electron, but it's got more mass, so I've got a little handy kind of memory tool here. I think of it as being a fat electron, but don't write that in the exam, okay? So it's exactly the same as an electron. It's a negatively charged lepton, but it's got a lot more mass. And um, if you produce one of those, you also produce a neutrino, okay, slightly different sort of neutrino. So... Um, 
two sorts of neutrinos, we need to know muon neutrinos, which are associated with the production of a muon, and electron neutrinos, which are what you get when you produce an electron. So if you get a beta decay, you'll get an electron neutrino. If you get a muon decay, you'll get a muon neutrino. Bear in mind that all of these have got antiparticles. There's a particularly annoying little fact here, which is the mu minus, they'll just write mu plus. There'll be no bar there to tell you that it's an antiparticle. So if you see mu plus or if you see E plus, okay, those are antiparticles with the neutrinos. They will write a bar because obviously you can't write a plus here because it's not, it's a neutral particle. So um, nu E bar or nu mu bar, okay, this is the Greek letter nu for neutrino, even though you and me can think of it as being a V if we want. Okay, this is a, um, these are the antiparticles of these particles, so look out for those. Okay, so here's the crucial table. You really need to be able to draw this table. So what I suggest you do is you watch, you have a look at this, then you go away and you see if you can draw it, and then you check it, and if you've got anything wrong, you go back and you try it again, because really none of the rest of this will make any sense until you get quite confident in um, saying which classes these different particles go into. So if you've got this so far, you'll know that hadrons feel a strong nuclear force and contain quarks. There's two sorts of hadrons. We've got baryons, which are made of three quarks. The examples we know of a baryon are a proton, up, up, down, or the neutron, up, down, down. Okay, loads of other possibilities, but these are the two you're specifically supposed to know. They might ask you questions about one of the other ones. You just have to know the rules. It's made of three quarks. And a meson, which is a quark-antiquark -quark pair, so it's not a baryon because its baryon number is going to be zero. Two specific examples, we did the pions. So four different pions, a pi plus, a pi zero, and a pi minus, but two different sorts of pi zero. Uh, similarly for the kaons, four different kaons. Remember the kaons are the ones that contain strange quarks, so these are strange particles. And then our leptons. A muon, mu zero, so a reminder again, if you see mu plus, that's an anti-muon. The electron, E minus, sometimes you'll see that written as beta minus, because remember a beta particle just is a fast-moving electron, it's the same thing. A neutrino, and they come in two flavours, either the muon neutrino or the electron neutrino. Okay, you can work out the quarks from the information that's in the data sheet, that's how I'd recommend you do it. Okay, but everything else on there you need to be able to draw.